Good morning. Welcome to Trainwreck Marriage. I'm Dave Touchton. And I'm Susan Touchton. Hey, uh, okay, this week we're going to take a little bit of a turn, not much. As you know, each week is kind of based off our life and what we're currently going through because everybody's lives are similar. Um, this week, um, you know, I took on a project this weekend with my son. He's graduated and we're building a welding truck for him. And, you know, mechanics is not my number one skill. It's something I enjoy doing, but it's not really, I'm not really great at it. And so I had in my mind on Thursday, we're going to work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, maybe be off early Monday because we're going to make so much progress. And it went nowhere near like that. In fact, it went horribly wrong. We spent a day and a half trying to get eight bolts out. Um, the frustration level of what's going on, you know, we're both frustrated. And, and you know, uh, one thing that touched in men, which I think is common in most families, um, we don't work real well together. Um, usually somebody's mad. Usually somebody gets aggravated. Usually somebody, you know, through frustration makes the other one mad. It kind of goes back and forth. And, you know, um, it, it's honestly, we're just not good with working with each other. And, um, especially on a three day project that we're still not done. And, and it looks like it's going to be another well, through this weekend. And anyway, let me get back on track. My whole point in this thing is, you know, I say it in the beginning is something that would be a good father son project in the end. And, you know, that's what I was telling Eli last night as we were getting ready to leave because we were mad and mad with each other earlier. It's like, you know, but we've really done a great thing. I mean, we've spent all this time and yeah, we've got aggravated, but we haven't got where we walked away. And I can't say that me and my dad or me and my uncle or my uncle and his kids, or, I mean, I'm not, not saying anybody could have done better than what we did. And so, you know, I, I guess with that, the, the frustrations of life, number one, um, but that kind of, I listened to a sermon this weekend on a podcast, and it really kind of struck me as something that, um, well, we're just really not good at. I mean, it's just true. Um, of course, my phone won't pull up right this second with the Bible verse. Um, so I, I kind of was one of those things that, how do you find the positive when when all there is is negative around you? Um, I mean, my tendency is to not only be negative, but make sure everybody around me is negative and has to listen to my crap. Um, and it's not really intentional. It just just once you get full of life, negative problems. Um, so. But switching gears here, how do you relate with God and your spouse, which all of this I'm horrible with, so don't think that I've got this figured out. Um, before I start, you got anything you want to jump no, in? No, go ahead. I know. You, see where you're heading. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanksgiving to him and praise his name. You know, in the, the, the pastor that, that I got this from was saying that to enter God's gates, you have to do it with thanksgiving and praise. You know, when, and that's, that's not something that, number one, I'm real good at. I mean, really, if you think about it, I got to spend a whole weekend with my 17-year-old son working on a project that we both want to see successfully done. And looking back, I mean, this is really a mark on life. Why, why can I not be thankful for the time we're spending together? It's not the point that we each got frustrated. That's irrelevant. But at the end of the day, really being thankful. Because that's that's kind of the issue that that I run into a lot is, 
not being thankful for what God's done and applying that in a marriage situation, not being thankful for what Susan's done. I, I mean, you know, why as, as people and maybe men and maybe it's just me. And, and if so, I'm all right with that. But why it, is it so hard to be thankful and live in gratitude? Because really at the, at, you know, another verse that he used to back up and prove this um, is Jonah. And as, and if you know the, ver, the story. story, basically God told him to go one way. Jonah went the other way, got on a boat, fell off the boat, got swallowed by a whale. And uh, two, nine, Jonah 2.9 so he's in the well for three days, I think it is. And then, but it says, verse nine, but I with shouts of great, grateful praise will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish to vomit Jonah onto dry ground. I don't think those two correlations are, are, are way off. I mean, really, if you think about it, you've got praising him and being thankful to get into the gates. And Jonah's been in this fish for three days. And the moment he starts thanking God and praising God, he gets vomited out, gets released. And that's that's kind of was my thought this this week because me and Eli had a pretty good blow up last night and like I told him son I, I mean honestly we've done better than me and dad would have done or other fathers and sons would have done we've already would have already been mad thrown tools and walked away so um, I guess I guess that's really why are we not thankful for what God's done we always want it better or what's in our mind our expectation to happen um, when really there's just so much he's already done for us and, and our spouses do for us daily that we really aren't, we're not, it's not that we're not willing to thank him. We, we just don't, it's kind of expected, I guess. Well, I think a a couple thoughts that I've had is one, we just, we take our spouse or whomever, uh, may be the situation and we take them for granted so like the things that I feel like you're talking about that you need to be thankful for for me from it's just a daily thing that I do right and so it's just kind of expected take it for granted that it's going to be done and so we lose the idea of being thankful for it when we could because we don't realize Okay, what's the other side of the coin? If I wasn't doing the things that I do to keep the household running, for lack of a better word, what would that look like? Well, we don't know because I just do it. Right. And so we take that. I think we take each other for granted, for one. Um, And then something that God's really been impressing on me in the last week and today just solidified it. I started a new Um, study with my women's group this week. And um, we get so caught up in what is going on and what may happen or what could happen or what should happen. And we don't really take the time to follow God on a daily basis. We, you know, look to, well, what if this happens tomorrow? Or what if that happens a week from now? Or When is the bank going to come through on this loan that we're waiting to get to buy this house? And thinking about what they're going to need and how they're going to get there and what we're going to, what it's going to take to get, you know, to get there. When all God asks, he only gives us today. There's nothing that I can do to hurry up the loan process except get them what they need. I don't know what they need until they tell me that day what they need. And so it's just a process. I You know, like I said, God has really been showing me that we get so caught up in not living in the moment and and worrying about things that really are out of our control and not necessarily even worrying, but trying to in our minds, we think about, well, you know, how's this what's this going to look like or what do I need to get this done or whatever, when in reality, 
God just promises us today. And so we are to look for his guiding and direction for today. We had no idea what we were going to talk about. We didn't discuss what we were going to talk about on this podcast. We are we know that God is faithful and we pray every time before we come on the podcast for his Holy Spirit to speak through us. And that's living in the moment. That is sometimes it causes me much anxiety. Um, but on the flip side, taking his leading, we have to rely on his spirit to speak through us when we do this podcast because we don't, and that's our goal, is to not really have a plan, to allow him to speak through us. And I think that, for me, is what he is really showing me is just get through today. And I'm I'm also reading a, another book that David got for some of his men that it, it iterates the same thing. If you can quit one bad habit just for a day, just focus on that day. For me, it's eating healthy, you know. Get through one day at a time. Don't try to, you know, I'm going to do this for however many days. Just if I can do it one day and then the next day I do it again. And then the next day I do it again. And it, instead of worrying about whatever it is, whether it be finances, whether it be eating, whether it be trying to give up a bad habit, just get through it one day at a time. Absolutely. And they, I mean, I know that's one of the 12 step pro programs because I've heard it before, but you know, and, and that's what really kind of hit me, you know, Eli will be on the road come next year. He won't be here. And instead of enjoying this time, it's a frustration. It's an aggravation. And, you know, when I don't know why we do it, but it's kind of the same way with God. I mean, God's presence is here every day, and he blesses us greatly. And like Susan said, we're not promised tomorrow. We could die in a car wreck this afternoon, tonight, heart attack, whatever. Um, but yet, we always want more out of God. We always, we're never thankful for where we're at. And I'm not saying you're not, or but, but that's where I'm at. It's kind of like, how do I be thankful for what God's given today? What God's blessed us with today? I mean, we, you know, we've said this before, but we could be staring down the barrel of one of our kids or in a car wreck and die. I mean, people go through tragedies every day. But like Susan said, we, we look so far out and that's one of the problems with this truck is none of my expectations have been met. Time frame, when we'll be done, what it looks like, how it's going to come apart, who would have known it took a day and a half to get eight bolts that you can't reach? Why the idiots put it there? I don't know, but they did. Um, and some of it is out of me just not knowing. I've never done this before. So, I, I mean, I, I just really, whether it be marriage, whether it be God, whether it be how come we're not thankful every day for what we have? Well, and I think there's that expectation of possibly, you know, well, I know that I can do this or I should be able to do this, even though I, you've never done it before or, you know, you've not had to rip apart completely apart a truck. There's that expectation or that thought, okay, the end thing, goal is to get it up and running so he can drive it. So we focus on that instead of the steps that it has to take to get there. And they're going to be difficult. And there's almost an expectation like it shouldn't be difficult. It should just go easy because I know what I'm doing. That, when sounds, in, that sounds like a lot of marriages. Yeah. And when, <laughs> when reality, and it, you can apply it to marriage because, you know, we have this expectation of what our marriage should look like. And then after the I do's, it immediately <laughs> changes. <laughs> and you're like, what in the world just happened when... You forget the reason why you got married to begin with shortly after the I do's and you lose sight of, you, you want the end picture to be this glory. You know, we're going to have kids. We're going to get married. We're going to have kids. We're going to grow old. 
and we're going to have a white picket fence and everything's <laughs> going to be roses and rainbows. When in reality, that's the furthest thing from the truth. But our expectations are what always disappoint us because we don't focus on what God has for us on a daily basis. We just expect dot, dot, dot. And then when that doesn't happen, we're always disappointed. Well, and that's what uh, I was just thinking. You know, before you're married, you're exactly right. White picket fence, everything's perfect. All the kids are there. Every, and about two years in, you walk out the front door and realize there's nothing but a minefield out in our front yard, blowing crap up every minute. Things are, you know, and and I guess that's that's really what God kind of put on me today is is why are we not thankful for today well and let's be honest we all get on social media right. and everybody posts their best moments where their kids are you know running and playing with all these new toys and everything's wonderful and my husband's great happy anniversary we're in a beautiful dress or whatever when nowhere very rarely i will say never i won't say never but very rarely do you see the pictures when somebody's down in the muck or down in the, you know, difficulties or struggling. Yes, you'll see, hey, can you pray for me? Or, you know, this is going on. But you're not very, I don't know that I've ever seen, hey, my husband and I are struggling in our relationship. Can you pray for us? Right. That doesn't happen on social media. And I'm not saying we want it to happen on social right. media. There's other avenues that you can use to get people to pray for you and your marriage. But what I'm saying is we see all these glorious, wonderful things on social media. And then we think, well, why isn't my life like that? Well, that's, I, I think of a, a friend of ours that's been coming to the house a lot and everything's roses and butterflies for everybody else but me. It's horrible. And and the truth is, you know, a lot of the things he's, a lot of the things that he sees people do and, you know, why isn't God working in my life like he is theirs? And why isn't they've got a perfect relationship and I've got no relationship? And, you know, it's one of those things. I know some of the backstories. And they ain't all roses and butterflies. In fact, they're train wrecks like ours because I've had conversations with them. And I know where they're at. So I think sometimes we put our... What we look at the, excuse me, every day, how everybody is in that moment. And the problem is, there's very little truth in the world. Right. There, There's very little truth about relationships because everybody's scared they're the only ones in it. Mm-hmm. And so they don't want to tell everybody, whether it be you go to church, you don't want everybody to know that your relationship's in trouble or is bad because that's not cool because everybody else's is roses and butterflies when really they've got a lot of the same problems you have or they've worked through the same problems you're going through. And that's part of why we do this podcast is you know, if you're struggling in your marriage, at the end of the day, we want you to know you're not alone. Mm -hmm. we, we struggle every day as well. After 27 years, God resurrecting our marriage, saving us from being divorced, but yet we still have struggles every day. There, There is no perfect marriage. And so then, and I'm going to switch this. So if there's nothing that's perfect in this world, which we've proven time and time again, then why aren't we thankful and grateful for what is good? Mm. Whether it be from our spouse or from God, you know, when, and the same guy was telling me, he's like, you know, uh, God, God won't give me a, a girlfriend, uh, a, someone to be with. And he, he is so focused on that that he doesn't realize how much God's blessed him along the way. And we do that in our lives. We we have our expectation of we're going to retire, we're going to do this, we're going to buy, and it's all going to be great. How many dreams start with this is going to suck? <laughs> I mean, really. 
we 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 put the and then we make these dreams expectations then when they don't happen we're devastated well they were dreams they were never real life and so what God's kind of showing me is be thankful for what I've given you each day try to figure out a way to praise him because that's how you get into the gates that's where God changes, and when you start praising him and being thankful, that's when Jonah got released. That's when you go into God's presence. I mean, I, I think there's a real key, but when you tie that to marriage as well, I mean, who here on this podcast, which you can all raise your hand and I can't <laughs> see you, um, but who has a spouse that is thankful every day for the other person? And you know it and you feel it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think that our expectation is they ought to just worship the ground we walk on, say thank you every second. But I know I'm horrible at it. Well, and I think too, I think it all, I think expectation, I think is the word for the day because it's, that's what it is. You know, having a dream in and of itself is not bad or wrong. We all dream. We all want something different for our lives. But just know that it may not look like what you think it's going to look like. It's going to happen, one, if God allows it to happen, and two, it's going to happen how he wants it to happen, not how we want it to happen. So you have this expectation of this is going to happen um, and it's going to look like this and it's going to happen on this day and at this time and da, da, da. When in reality, that's the furthest thing from the truth. You know, we've learned over our walk being a Christian that God always answers prayer. There's not a prayer that you can pray that he doesn't answer. But sometimes the answer is no. Yeah. And it's for your benefit. <laughs> And it's for his purposes because he already knows the outcome. He doesn't have to live day by day by day because he already knows the outcome. Yes. He has planned the future. So he doesn't have to live day by day, but we do because he wants us to follow him on a daily basis. And as long as we're following him and walking the way he's directing us, then our dream is going to be better than what we can even imagine it to be because it's in God's will. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's the thing is, I think a Garth Brooks song, Unanswered Prayers. Yes. You know, and, and that's the thing is, you know, we think we know what's best for our relationship, our life, all of this. and For our spouse. For our spouse, yeah. And, you know, if God gave us everything that we asked for, mm -hmm we would be spoiled children. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't follow him. We would be like, oh, hey, God, uh, I need a jacked up four-wheel drive, brand new diesel, bam, done. Okay, I'm going to give this to my son. Okay, God, I need this house. I need, uh, you know, X amount of dollars. I need this. Bam, it's done. You know, and, and that's, we treat God that way, but you all know kids that get everything they want from their parents. We call them spoiled. We call them spoiled rotten. But yet we expect God to be that way towards us. So it, it's a real struggle, you know, to, to stay in what, what's really what I would consider reality in the moment. Is what's God done for us today, this moment? Mm-hmm. We both woke up. I mean, realistically, one of us could have died in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you start looking at whether it be kids or your job, okay, you hate your job. Okay, somebody wants your job. Guarantee you, if you quit, someone's going to fill that spot. And so is it just the place where we're at? I've got a friend working at a, a fairly toxic environment. Um, and when he took the job, um, you know, I, that's what I told him. I said, I think you're here to get tools and experience for your next job. 
So it's really lightened him because they, they have moved him all over. He's learning all kinds of different stuff that he had no knowledge of before. And it's not a great environment. But his attitude is, hey, they were teaching. They now want me to do this so I can learn this, this, and this. Well, I mean, how do you make a bad situation into a good? How do you see the positive side? And I think that's I, I think that's really it. The question is, are you positive or negative? Is everything bad? Is the glass always half empty or is the glass always half full? And then when you apply that to God, because at the end of the day, um, you've, you've got to apply it to God and your spouse. Because the thing is, when you start applying, am I just being negative towards God? Or am I being positive? Am I saying thank you for what I do have? The truck started this morning. I'll be honest with you. We got one of our guys that is locked out of his truck this morning. Um, and that's that's the thing is, when you're locked out of the truck, you're not thankful for having the truck the day before and being able to get into it and drive it. You're now sitting on the outside. And I, I guess that's kind of where God's just really put on me today. What are you thankful for that he's done? Or do you even appreciate what he's already done for you or is currently doing? Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think that, um, again, it's just kind of taking the time to really reflect on the blessings. You know, we can all attest to the fact that we all have struggles. There's always something to be negative about. There's always something to be um, stressed about. There's always something to be. Life is difficult. I'll say it once. I'll say it again. Um, Life is difficult. But praise God, we have a God that knows every detail of our lives, and He wants what's best for us. And if we would just pause long enough to see where he's leading us and guiding us, then life might not quite be so difficult and we would be able to find the things that we're thankful for. Well, and that's, that's exactly right. And that's, um, and that's where I really want to reality check you this morning. And what, what should you be thankful for that you're not? And and really kind of focus on, and you can apply it to whatever situation you want to. Your your parents, God, your spouse, your kids. You know, your, your attitude is like a mirror. If you're getting a bad attitude from somebody, that may be because you have a bad attitude. And I just, you know, when it comes to marriage, it's so tough as it is. Um. I I think it's one of those things that we take our spouses and we take God for granted Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're not, um, we're not happy they're doing what they're doing. We just, again, like Susan said, expect them to do it. And then we, it becomes just part of breathing almost. And, um, so anyway, I, I just really today that kind of hit me of uh, being thankful and and if you haven't told your spouse thank you for what they do, you need to because it, it does they do a lot and you may do a lot as well and they may not be thankful. That's no reason for you not to be thankful to them mm-hmm. because bottom line is if they don't if you're not thankful to them then. Odds are they'll never change. They'll just be who they are. So anyway, that's kind of what I got for this for today. Yeah, and I would just say live for today. Yeah. Just live for today and not focus on tomorrow or the next day or the next day or what may or may not happen. Live for today and search for God and how he's leading you through this day. Absolutely. Well, you guys have a great day. We love you and have fun. Bye.